Hey, are you thinking about moving to Seattle or the area around it like Redmond, Washington? Well, in today's video, we're going to jump into my computer and help you understand a little bit more about kind of what's in Redmond. What are the things to do? Where are the restaurants? Um, you know, the activities? What is it close by? Um, so that you can get a better idea of what your life might be like if you were to live in Redmond, Washington. So if that sounds cool to you, then let's get right after it. Hi, if this is your first time on my channel and you want to know all about moving to Seattle and the areas around it, then subscribe below so you can be the first to learn about the current market here in Seattle. My name is Kelsey Anderson. I am a local realtor. So if you want to know about more about the area and kind of get to know um, some of the intricate details of the Seattle area, particularly on the east side, um, then get in touch with me using the information in the description below um, so that we can get to know what you're looking for, what your affordability is, um, and we can definitely hop on a Zoom call, text, call, um, any of those things to just kind of get to know you a little bit better and what you are looking for. So as I said, we're going to jump into my computer. So let's go do that. So zoomed in here a bit, you can see where Redmond is on a map close to Seattle. 520 is going to be the freeway that you are going to take um, to get to and from Seattle. It's about 20 minutes away. So as far as the towns located near Redmond, um, you've got Kirkland, um, one of my favorite, very, very favorite suburbs around Seattle. And Kirkland is right along the waterfront. It's directly west of Redmond. And then to the north, you've got beautiful Woodenville, um, our little wine country. Um, and then to the east, you've got Sammamish and Issaquah, um, places like that. And then to the south, um, down here is where Bellevue is. So um, incredible towns, neighbor Redmond, um, and it's got incredible proximity to the city. So not only are there amazing jobs like Microsoft, you know, right in Redmond, but you've also got Kirkland right next door. Bellevue just south um, and then Seattle just 20 minutes away so the proximity um, definitely impacts the home prices in Redmond um, the median home price here is one million one hundred eighty six thousand um, but that's why so incredible um, proximity to nearby jobs and uh, recreation which we'll get into in a second um, but just incredible um, fun can be had here in Redmond you've got 76,000 residents um, in this smaller suburb around Seattle Redmond is also rated number two best suburb in all of Washington so that's got to speak volumes for all the fun you can have here in Redmond and just how close you are to other amenities um, that people love in the Pacific Northwest like the mountains and the ocean and lakes um, and all that good stuff. It's got an A plus rating in public schools, um, A plus good for families and an A plus in outdoor activities, um, including A ratings in nightlife, diversity and commute, um, which if you're like me and a lot of other people, that is massively important. You got a little bit of entertainment in the city of Redmond, but you're also incredibly close to your job and other um, fun things. So that's pretty cool. All right, a little bit zoomed out here so that you can get an idea of where the airports are going to be. Um, if you live in Redmond, but you want to uh, get on a plane for vacation or if you have to commute regularly for your job. Um, so there's actually two airports. The main airport is, of course, SeaTac Airport. And from Redmond, um, you're going to take 520 to connect to 405 like this. And then you'll go south down 405. Uh, through Bellevue, through Renton. Um, and then when you get to the bottom here towards Renton, you kind of hit the Tequila area and then SeaTac's gonna be uh, right down here. So um, that's about 30 minutes away. Um, and then you're also in the middle of another airport. It's much smaller, it's called Payne Field. I've taken it, it's delightful, but there are only two gates. Um, so if you go north on a 405, um, you will hit Payne Field up here so just another airport that's about 31 minutes away again we're talking without traffic you never know during rush hour times um, but it's about 30 minutes to both airports kind of nice to have that flexibility but you're not really close so if you have to travel a ton for work um, it's going to be a little bit harder to get a ride you might have to keep a car at the airport because it is 30 minutes away not 
terribly far, but there's definitely um, areas that I cover that are closer to the airport. All right, now the fun part. Uh, we get to get into what are the fun things to do, um, both in Redmond and then just close to Redmond, so not too far. Um, but what are the things that you can do if you live in Redmond? What are the amenities that you really get living in this city? So um, first, you'll notice that Redmond sits uh, right on top of this kind of northern part of Lake Sammamish. Lake Sammamish is a beautiful seven mile lake. Um, and actually you can take, there's actually a trail that goes around. I've biked it many times. You can bike or jog. I'd recommend biking because it's like 22 uh, miles. Um, but you can actually go around all of Lake Sammamish, um, which is really cool. Um, tons of trails here. We'll get into kind of the Sammamish River Trail, which is fantastic. Uh, runs all the way north and south through Redmond. Um, but I did want to point out that part on Lake Sammamish. Um, you also have Idlewood Park down here, Idlewood Beach Park. Um, I cover that in another video, but that's kind of the, the only main beach access point um, in Redmond. But um, if you go uh, directly west and you hit Kirkland, you're so super close, especially if you live over here kind of in the Rose Hill, Grasslawn um, neighborhoods of Redmond. You're so close to downtown Kirkland, um, kind of Marina Bay Park. That is just a 10, uh, maybe 15 minute drive away. And there's tons of beach parks along there. So if you want to be close to the beach, um, Lake Beach, of course, you got Lake Washington and Lake Sammamish within 10, 15 minutes on both sides. Uh, so that's not going to be an issue. All right. Now I'm a little bit zoomed out because if you, Lake isn't your jam, but the mountains are, or maybe both because you like to have fun all year round, um, you are going to want to connect to I-90 and head out to the mountains, um, the Cascades. We've got, of course, brilliant mountains here in uh, the Pacific Northwest. You've got the, um, you've got the Olympic Mountains and Mount Rain, beautiful Mount Rainier down near Tacoma, Puyallup area. And then down over to the east, you've got incredible mountains for skiing. And that's going to be your access point um, from Redmond. So from Redmond, you're going to take, um, you're going to take 202 and it connects over here, and then you'll hit that out to um, I-90. I-90 is gonna take you out uh, to North Bend um, and Snoqualmie, um, and that's where you can uh, hit the slopes at Alpental. Um, you can ski the mountain at um, Crystal Mountain is over in the east. Uh, you've got skiing, snowboarding, you can float the river, Snoqualmie River um, in the summer months, uh, but you're really not far. You just have to connect down to 90. It's gonna be about a 45 minute drive uh, from Redmond. There's other ways to get to 90 as well. Um, you can just connect that that kind of that road where you're biking is uh, similar for parts just driving down Lake Sammamish Parkway and get to 90 that way um it's really going to depend if you want to take some side roads but you just have to connect to 90 so this is the main interstate that goes east and west in the state of Washington and that's going to take you out to the really fun slopes if you are someone that likes outdoor movies, you've got a lot of great options right here and just outside of Redmond, Washington. So Marymore Park has an awesome um, outdoor movie, outdoor movie, outdoor theater. Um, and that's gonna be located right about here. And then just north of Redmond in Woodenville, kind of close to where it says Willow's, Ro Willow's Lodge right here. Um, this is kind of our Woodenville Winery is out here. And so you have Santo St. Michelle, which hosts pretty big concerts. Um, so fun. You have to be a wine member for over a year to get um, premium access, like early access to tickets, because some of the some artists actually totally sell out because um, they're not a, not huge artists, but pretty big artists will uh, go there and they will sell out their concerts. But so much fun to have their wine out on the lawn or bring your own. Um, super awesome and that is right um, just north of Redmond in Woodenville. All right next up I want to talk about Marymore Park because this is a really special area. It's a 640 acre park um, in southern Redmond. It, um, it borders this kind of north part of Lake Sammamish and it has got a ton of fun for the whole family. So there's a huge uh, dog park, um, op you know off-leash dog park um, there's a velodrome to bike race. There are sports fields. There are, um, I mean, multiple play sets for kids, um, tennis courts. 
There are a lot of the bike trails. So if you're going to be biking around Lake Sammamish, uh, you're going to go through the southern part of Marymore Park. And this is also where the Sammamish River Trail begins. So um, kind of right going through here and then just going all the way north is the Sammamish River. And along that river um, is a 10 mile bike path uh, that takes you up, you know, you kind of go through Bothell and you can actually connect to um, uh, the Burke Gilman uh, into Seattle. It's really fun if you want a really long bike ride. Um, you're right along that kind of the Sammamish Slough. Um, you can actually canoe in that water as well, um, but just super fun. I've been doing that since I was a kid, running, biking. There's even a cool bar in Bothell. There used to be a couple others that you could find on your way to Seattle, but just a super amazing bike path um, that starts in Marymore Park. Um, well, I like to think of it as it starts there. I guess you could kind of continue going uh, down uh, Lake Sammamish if you wanted to, but incredible bike path. As I stated, for any of those wine lovers up here, you've got the Woodenville Winery, which offers a ton of different wine options and restaurants, and that's just north of Redmond. So especially if you live in the North Redmond um, neighborhoods or even Education Hill, you're super close, um, but it's not far off of 405. Um, anywhere in Redmond, honestly, to get there. Um, but it's kind of our little local wine country. It's kind of out in the little bit of the farmland um, in Woodenville, and it's just absolutely beautiful. So much fun. There's whiskey bars, um, just a great place to kind of gather with your friends. You, you can usually get a passport to get some cheaper deals from Costco. 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, also, there is Willow's Run Golf Complex, which is right here, located just on the west side, um, sort of in the Rose Hill neighborhood, um, toward, more north towards 60 acres. Um, and this is not far off the beaten path from that Sammamish River Trail. Um, I think they're actually going to extend the bike trail out, uh, looks like, uh, by Willow's Run. But this is a humongous golf complex. Um, there are two full-on 18-hole golf courses um, with a nine-hole par three and an 18 hole kids course called Rainbow Run. Um, and they've got Fire Fire Creek Grill uh, right on site, which is this cute little restaurant right looking out on the golf course, um, but so much fun right there. So for golf enthusiasts, major, major golf complex right in the city. So just north of Marymore Park, you've got the Redmond downtown area, and this area has changed so much. Um, I have, I grew up close to Redmond, um, and I'm going to tell you, in my 35 years, um, it has become so much more urban, even though you're kind of in suburbia out here um, in the suburbs of Seattle. But it is incredible. There have been so many apartment buildings that have gone in downtown. So if you want to live a little bit suburban-y where there's lots of like bars and restaurants and shopping and a few movie theaters um, really close to you, Redmond is kind of um, really come on the... Um, the page for that. So um, love how sort of urban it feels with just lots of people that can live down there. Um, and there's all the fun things there is to do. So downtown Redmond is a hugely popular area um, and super close to 520. The light link rail is actually going to drop off. Um, it's extending into Redmond. So super easy proximity to go from Seattle to Redmond. Drops you off right at Redmond Town Center, which is a huge outdoor mall. Um, very popular, has its own like kind of Cinnabar situation. Bella Bottega movie theater is right down the street, but you've got another theater uh, in Redmond Town Center. But downtown Red Redmond has tremendous amount of restaurants. I'll tell you about them in just a moment. Um, but lots of fun to be had right in the downtown area. And a lot more people have access to this um, just because of the uh, more affordable apartments and condos that have gone in downtown if you're not looking for single family housing. Next up, I just want to talk about um, the high schools a little bit. So Redmond... Um, the, the city of Redmond only actually has one public high school. That is Redmond High School. It's part of the Lake Washington School District, which is a highly rated school district, which includes uh, kiddos coming from Sammamish um, and Kirkland and even a little bit more up north. It kind of covers this whole geographical area on the north side here. So that includes Redmond. Um, the only high school that is actually in the city proper, Redmond, um, is Redmond High School. That's located here, um, actually on Education Hill 
up here. There's another STEM high school. It's got less than a thousand kids, um, but um, Tesla STEM school is also another kind of choice charter um, school option um, for kids that are wanting to really excel in the engineering department. But um, Redmond High School, again, located in this northern region, um, it has outstanding ratings from niche.com. And so if you live um, sort of in this upper region, you'll go to Redmond High School. Um, but a lot of um, a lot of um, some of the houses I cover in other videos down here in Rose Hill um, and Grasslawn will um, go to the Lake Washington High School located over here in uh, Kirkland. But Redmond High School is pretty special. It gets an A-plus rating by Niche.com. It's got 2,221 students um, and gets an A-plus in academics, clubs and activities, college preparation, sports, you name it. It's actually rated the number nine best public high school in Washington. So again, if you live on that northern side of Redmond, um, your kiddos might be going to Redmond High School and it will not disappoint. All right, I want to show you where the neighborhoods are um, in Redmond and stick around to the end because I'm going to show you where um, some of the most amazing restaurants. Um, but this is kind of uh, this is from the Renton uh, website. Um, I'm I show homes over in um, Grasslawn and the Rose Hill and Education Hill neighborhoods. Um, but you're going to have kind of residential areas on the outside of this. So if you're looking at um, if you're looking at this map, I show you a home here in Rose Hill as well as over here in Grasslawn. Um, those are both one to two million dollars. Um, and then I show you a home up here in Education Hill that's right now listed at three million dollars. Um, but most of Redmond is definitely going to have homes between one and three million dollars. There's not a ton on the market right now. Um, it is the middle of winter, so more homes should come on in the springtime. Um, but it is not cheap to live in Redmond, Washington. So you've definitely got residential neighborhoods over here in Southeast Redmond, um, North Redmond, Education Hill, Bear Creek um, is a really fancy pants kind of neighborhood over on the um, east side, close to Sammamish, Washington. Um, a lot of kiddos go to the Bear Creek School. They've got a lot of um, private schools over there. Um, and then this Rose Hill area, which kind of, you know, kind of bleeds over into Kirkland here to the west. Um, is another residential area in addition to Grasslawn. Um, Grasslawn also has that amazing Grasslawn Park in the neighborhood of Grasslawn. So those are kind of the main residential neighborhoods um, and kind of where they're located. The proximity to downtown where you've got Marymore, Redmond Town Center, and all the restaurants and kind of that urban nightlife um, in downtown, it's all pretty much around that area. So you're not too far from downtown. Um, geographically, everyone's kind of close to that central area. Um, but anywhere around Redmond, you're gonna be paying about one to $3 million for a three bedroom or more single family home. You can definitely rent apartments um, in the city uh, in $2,000 range um, per month, but you're definitely gonna be paying top dollar to be living in Redmond, again, because of the amazing commute um, to nearby jobs and cities and all the amenities located both in Redmond and close by. All right, I wanna jump in last thing to the amazing restaurants and dining that you've got right in the heart of Redmond. You don't have to go into Kirkland to eat on the waterfront or into Bellevue in Seattle. You've got a lot of really great cuisine from around the world located right in this small suburbia, okay? So when you're in the downtown area, um, you not only have some great shopping, uh, you got your Target, Fred Meyer, and the Home Depot super close by. And then you also have Trader Joe's right in downtown. Are you kidding me? You could live in an apartment or condo downtown and walk to Trader Joe's. Yes. Thank you, Seattle Living. Okay, downtown, we've got incredible restaurants. You can just see a couple on the map here, and I'm going to show you a ton more. Uh, Lunchbox Lab Burgers. Uh, yes, please. Um, okay, but there's a ton more. Downtown, you've got some kind of American restaurants like... BJ's and Woodblock. Um, you've got your fancy kind of prime steakhouse. Um, Redmond's Bar and Grill is a place that the locals will tell you is a fantastic place to go kind of for like more a dining experience with your family or friends. Um, Molly Moon's for ice cream down here. You've got the Matador um, for good Mexican. 
The Tipsy Cow is a, a new popular a burger joint. Um, Kanishka is a cuisine of India. Um, you've got incredible bars. We stopped in um, to Northwest Brewing Company, which was super fun, amazing atmosphere in there. Um, and they recommended another dive bar across the street. So right on Leary Way, which kind of goes right through um, the downtown area, is going to have a lot of fun. Um, kind of, again, just a couple streets up from your, uh, you know, Redmond Town Center area. Uh, as we were driving through town, we also saw a new shop called Cannabis and Coffee. And I'm like, hmm, only in Seattle, what might you go by a restaurant called Cannabis and Coffee? Eh? To each their own. Uh, you've got Dozone down here. You've got ramen. You've got Greek food. Um, honestly, you name it, there are options for you downtown. Bars, restaurants, movie theaters, um, big family restaurants, like I mentioned, like BJ's, which is down uh, near, uh, right near uh, in the Redmond Town Center area, but lots of other kind of just hole in the wall restaurants and bars. Um, fantastic for people both living in the outskirts um, of Redmond and then also living in that downtown area. All right. I hope you had fun getting to know um, the different spots around Redmond, Washington, and what Redmond is close to. Um, again, if you have any questions um, that I didn't cover in this video, uh, please let me know. Again, my information is in that description below. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications. I had a lot of fun today. I hope you got some value uh, from this content in this video. Definitely stick around for the next one to learn more about the areas around Seattle. If you don't uh, see me around town, then I just hope you have a wonderful day. See you later.